Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Luis Sanchez Fernandez, and I'm going to present the BSF Governance Operational Model for Ontologies. Uh, just a bit of background. First of all, uh, I'm a bioinformatician and biochemist, and I have been working for BSF for almost two years. Uh, BSF is a chemical company that has been having a specific interest on ontologies and semantic web-related technologies for the last years. And uh, we have different teams that are working on, uh, on this field, trying to enhance uh, and semantify all of what we have uh, into ontologies. So let's see uh, the agenda that we have. We are going to give up some background on why we started with this project. Uh, we're going to explain the different components that WOMO has, and finally, uh, some next steps that we are planning to do. OK, so first of all, why do we need ontology governance? As a company, we identified that different groups were working trying to solve the heterogeneity in different domains. Also, the development process uh, lacked coordination, quality methods, and governance structure. There was a strong need for standardization. However, they relied on ad hoc practices. Hence, they produced ontologies that were not interoperable, discoverable, or understandable. Indeed, this could generate obstacles to data integration and results in the duplication of efforts and poor coordination across stakeholders, such as data knowledge stewards, data scientists, application owners, and also users. We wanted a way to avoid these issues. That's why we came up with the idea of establishing a framework that could empower BSF users and developers in the area of building, consuming, and maintaining ontologies. We would want to do it decentralized as well as centralized. This framework would provide a common space where alignments can be produced, and its name is GOMO, or the Governance Operational Model for Ontologies. GOMO proposes, among other things, that it could guide the organization's areas into meeting their goals individually and also uh, as a whole, having an effective coordination of these requirements of stakeholders and units having to provide ontology solutions. Also, GOMO provides some definition on common and standardized methodologies and techniques for ontology development avoiding, as we said, these ad hoc practices, enabling also the, re the reusability and the interoperability of ontologies. GOMO directs the use of existing tools and also identifies requirements for tooling framework. It's not about uh, developing tools, but enabling the development of these tools, identifying what are the gaps that we have. Finally, GOMO harmonizes the ontology development efforts consider the difference in knowledge and capacities of the people involved. This means that we were trying to empower our users by trainings and improving their know-how. And for achieving these topics, we developed the GOMO work streams. We are going to explain them later in detail, but just as a glimpse, they are the governance principles, standards, best practices, trainings, and outreach. So let's define then uh, with a bit of precision uh, what the scope of WOMO is. And in these points, we can see that the idea was to develop an environment or a framework that would enable our organization into the area of developing, consuming, and maintaining ontologies. However, we thought that WOMO is not an enforcing, uh, enforcement tool, but it's for suggestion and trying to empower our users. So it means that everyone could take benefit of what we have developed. And also it's useful for us because we are then adding different layers to help and empower users. But we are trying to avoid uh, having strict policies. Also, since ontology governance implies also FAIR, uh, we, were, we would like to uh, discuss about ontology governance, but not on data governance topics such as uh, quality or security. Also, since this model was generated by the work of different ontology teams with this idea of uh, being supported by our community internally and also externally, 
uh, we are trying to want this initiative and avoiding being just a siloed effort, but we are trying to go further than that. And finally, GOMO is supposed to be technology agnostic, avoiding this need for constant updates regarding technologies. So this uh, set of documentations that we have created uh, are technology agnostic. Finally, GOMO has been created by the uh, effort of teams in BASF uh, that are on the left and with the collaboration with the academia from two universities from Spain. We're going to talk a bit later about also how this collaboration was made. So uh, then I would like to show you where we are heading with GOMO, which are the, the real scenario. As the main idea, our final goal is to obtain connected data and knowledge for humans and machines. And by doing it, we democratize the way of managing ontologies, enabling the generation of an environment where ontologies bring value to the organization using reusable modules that could interoperate between them, for instance. Also, we will have this common language for BSF, allowing machines to interact between each other through standardized protocols. The next point is that ontologies help to capture knowledge in a standardized way, using common metadata with documentation that is human readable, and while working on specific projects where we were developing ontologies, we wouldn't want to reinvent the wheel each time. So we will be applying common methodologies and workflows such as curation or deployment. We have a complete ontology life cycle to describe the whole process of developing and maintaining ontologies. We are going to see them in a moment. And finally, we need this input from our communities, communities that understand the domain that we are developing in each ontology. Also, we would have this provision of a clear structure of the different roles and responsibilities that units should have in the process of, develop, of developing ontologies. Now, let's go quickly through the GOMO work streams, these different components that GOMO is ingrained. First of all, we have the governance principles, which are a set high level fundamental rules on how our organization should develop, publish, maintain, and consume ontologies. In other words, they provide this generic framework as a basis for the other work streams, standards, best practices, training, etc., to build upon. Next point are standards, which provide an agreed specifications that are going to be followed during the entire life cycle. Each standard is associated with a quality assurance method to allow the use of human or software-based evaluation of the implementation and correction of this standard. We have also a link between standards and governance principles to say that standards ensure that principles are followed. Upon standards, we could have conventions from different aspects about what mandatory metadata in the ontology must be present to how to structure the GitHub repository of ontologies. Next topic are best practices which delivers a set of guidelines and recommendations that could explain and illustrate how we can follow principles and implement standards. Also, we would be providing the, for the user this background knowledge that is required to perform different activities. And since best practices are the reference material, trainings are the practical side. They come directly from best practices and they allow us to establish this link between uh, our experts and new users. Also, having these trainings would allow us to have different activities regarding outreach to having the application of COMO in the organization using specific programs or uh, by applying directly GOMO in concrete projects. Let's see now how do we have these governance principles interact with other work streams. At the center, we could see the principle five that states that ontologies must include human readable documentation. This principle is linked at a high level because principles are meant to be built at a high level with principle seven that implies that ontologies must have a community. But principle five also, since talk about documentation, is linked 
to a standard for ontology documentation and also another standard for ontology diagram notation. We can see that all of them are linked to a best practice that is going to explain in detail how we can follow all of these paths. And if you can see these standards have also quality assurance methods attached to them with specific parameters that are going to, that are going to check uh, how we are following these standards. Okay, we built the COBO governance principles taking as reference the OBO principles for ontologies in bio biological and biomedical field, having also in mind the industrial ontologies foundry principles and state-of-the-art guidelines for fair ontologies. And as we know, these guidelines governance principles are axioms that are going to guide and influence how ontology should be developed in or, and used in our organization, giving us this context as a high level. Let's see then what are our principles. We have then a principle stating that ontologies must be fair, a principle with a lot of recommendations attached to, uh, to this principle, a principle on the availability and accessibility of ontologies to the organization's community, a principle on having security policies and access rights defined for ontologies, other principles for the persistency of the different versions of an ontology, another that one that states that an ontology must have human readable documentation to provide this context, description and examples. Other principle is about modularization, so we could have interconnected modules addressing specific knowledge areas in the scope of the ontology, or perhaps other modules have different security requirements, but are networked in, in a usable way, so we need to have this information. And finally, we have a principle on the definition of the roles in an ontology community. Now we are going to see the ontology life cycle, which is based upon the one in the LOT methodology, it will have four main stages, the requirements where we are gathering all of the information that we need for developing ontologies. This is the most critical step because if we apply all of these tasks in a useful way, we are going to obtain key value that is going to be used in the next steps. Once we have these requirements done, we are going to the second step, the implementation, where uh, after different discussions with domain experts, we work in an iterative way for conceptualizing, encoding, and testing the ontology. Once that uh, we have answered all of the questions that we have identified in the requirement section, we go to the publication stage. This stage is about deploying the ontology in a production in a productive environment, but also it's about uh, defining the security, defining the access rights, having specific documentation for the ontology. And once all of this is ready, it is published. And then we go to the last part of maintenance. In this part, the ontology is being consumed and we have a standardized uh, workflow for curation where uh, we can see if new uh, requirements are needed and then we could have the elicitation of these new requirements going back into the implementation phase. Okay, but why this, how this common ontology life cycle is related to, to the principles and how they interact between each other? We can see that the principle on fairness and the principle about community are related to all phases of the life cycle. However, the modularity principle is tied just to the implementation because that's where the ontology is going to be uh, implemented. Then we have the publication stage, which is governed by the principles of availability, access rights, and documentation. And the principle on persistency and management of versions is related mainly to the maintenance. Since we have seen how these principles interact with the life cycle. Let's talk about how these principles are related to the next uh, work stream in GOMO, the GOMO standards, which are an agreed convention on how to build and maintain ontologies. They are the specification of these principles, and we are going to summarize the 10 standards that GOMO defines. First, 
we have the convention and format, which refers to the naming convention of any text in the ontology, as well as what are the valid ontology formats, for example, old version 2. We have also a standard for defining the structure of the ontology IRI, which are applied to all of the ontologies that have been developed internally. The next block set out what kind of mandatory and additional metadata an ontology and also its components should have. That is to say, we could have ontologies that must have a title, a creator, a specific license, etc. And as obsoleting entities in ontologies are a common task to do in ontologies that are in a production environment, we are also taking care of what steps must be followed to perform this deprecation process. Our standards do not gather all information related to the ontology and its content, but also topics around it. We have standards for structuring the ontology repository and also the management of the ontology version. And finally, we have the documentation and inside it, we have a, another standard just for our own diagram notation to represent the schema of the ontology. <clears throat> In order to comply to standards, which are this specification, we need to apply quality assurance methods. Ngomo doesn't go directly into developing these uh, pipelines, but it provides the set of specification that a pipeline should have. And once we have this toolkit, we could have this example where an ontology could go through this pipeline, checks which QA passes and which QA are not passing, uh, which are related also to the amount of parameters that are mandatory and optional, warnings, errors, and uh, if there is an error that is considered critical, the pipeline stops and yeah, we could not deploy this ontology. Also, a report would be generated stating the results or of applying each QA. These uh, quality assurance methods are an example of a specification that GOMO has done, but it's not being implemented as part of the project. So it's up to our different teams to build tools related to GOMO and then applying all of this information. Next topic is about best practices and trainings that are going to be summarized together. We have general guidelines in our best practices linked to each step of the ontology lifecycle that we have seen, the kickoff implementation, publication and maintenance. Then we have also other guidelines not directly related to the ontology lifecycle, such as git branching on ownership transfer or deprecating entities. And we have guidelines completely outside of this part uh, that includes tutorials about ontology development, uh, short videos on uh, how to use common tools uh, uh, used by our users. And if we go then for trainings, we could have that we have information from hack tape events, such as how to run a successful bootcamp, a hackathon that we have developed uh, for validating or uh, obtaining information from domain experts related to a specific domain. And we have also our ontology one-on-one -on -one series where uh, according to the needs of our users, we develop trainings directly tied to them, uh, to people with less skills on ontologies for specific tools such as WebProtege, uh, about people that wanted to know about how to consume ontologies in applications, also for uh, new users that wanted to know how to kickstart an ontology project or even as a whole having some examples of the development of ontologies in BSF uh, talked as stories that could help users to know the big picture. We are going to see the team members that we have developed in Como. We have a multidisciplinary team of ontology engineers, knowledge architects, uh, bioinformaticians, informaticians, uh, biologists uh, that are related to this world from different teams, uh, from the bio perspective, from the chemist perspective. Uh, and also we have been collaborating with the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and University of Murcia. Both of them have been really, really helpful to identify issues that could be interesting uh, for us and 
uh, this collaboration has been really great and we have developed a long and uh, <clears throat> nice set of guidelines. So just as a summary and next steps, uh, we are uh, ending the collaboration with our lawyers in order to release this material. And also we would like to have a coordination and feedback from community, not just internally, but externally. Uh, we would be pleased uh, to collaborate with you if you're interested about this governance model and also uh, to know your opinion, to improve it. And also if you're interested also in applying them because uh, we are going to release them directly in, in GitHub. So a summary, GOMO gives BSF the know-how to develop, use and maintain ontologies in a coordinated manner, decentralized as well as centralized. So thank you so much. And if you have any question, yeah, I would be pleased to answer. Thanks so much, Mabel. That was a great talk. Um, did you have some questions for the audience? Melissa has a question for you. That was a that was a terrific talk. I'm so excited to see this project um, because I heard about it um, a couple of years ago when you guys were getting started, and it's just really um, terrific to see it come to fruition. Um, there is an OBO governance task team that's been meeting, and we would love to invite you if you're able uh, to join us. Um, um, so that's not really a question, but a request. Um, <laughs> And uh, part of what we're trying to understand is how to grow the OBO community into a nonprofit uh, so it can better you know, kind of be a more formal standards development organization. But one of the questions I have for you, um, just in thinking a lot about these same kinds of things, and I just love the framework that you put together, is when you looked at the um, OBO Foundry guidelines, um, which many of us have participated in helping develop over many years, what did you find was the most like missing things or hard to reconcile with your own governance structures? Like, what were, where are the biggest gaps? And then, and then on the flip side, what do you think the most useful aspects of, of the existing um, kind of governance structures and, and principles um, were? Okay. Uh, first of all, yeah, uh, I would like to be in, in that discussion if you like. So yeah, please uh, contact me and. Uh, yeah, uh, redirect me to, to that discussion and I, I would be happy to be involved, of course. Um, also, uh, regarding the, the OBO Foundry principles, uh, we made a complete review about them. Uh, we thought about what were the, the points that we thought that it would be interesting for us. We had also the, sorry, we had also the view of how we could uh, work and develop uh, this set of guidelines that could help us at, at a high level uh, and uh, I'm not sure right now about which was the, the most critical part that uh, were missing from the uh, OBO Foundry. I think the, the part that we thought missing was uh, clarifications and uh, detailed guidelines on, on some parts that we thought that they could be improved also in in our principles. Uh, we have uh, direct links to, to the OBO Foundry when we think it's interesting. Uh, and the content that we have developed is mainly tied uh, to how come how uh, in, about these principles mainly how can we apply them and uh, how they could be used as a high level in the organization i don't know if i have answered your question but <laughs> i think i missed part of it oh, that's great thank you there's a couple of questions in the chat too um actually i have, I have a question as well um is your are your training materials publicly available uh not yet uh, we are going to go through the lodgers and uh, we think that at least part of it is going to be uh, available and at least our ontology tutorial, uh, a full tutorial uh, from the beginning on how to develop ontologies, including uh, all of the information related to how to apply GOMO to ontologies are going to be released. So uh, at least that part, yes. And also the full set of guidelines on uh, uh, principles, standards, and best practices. Uh, about trainings, uh, we are not sure because at least part of them include some of our internal uh, content regarding ontologies. So, yeah, we we'll go through the lawyer, and if we can cut those parts and add generic examples, of course, we, we will do it. Great. Thank you. Um, 
um, I work with Melissa as also I'm involved in the Oboe Foundry and we're also developing these open publicly available training materials called the Oboe Academy. So I would love to collaborate with you too on the work that we're doing there. And I'll be talking about that tomorrow when we talk. So I'll get in touch with you about that. But um, and then Tiffany asks, um, she really likes the GOMO principles and she's curious if you've thought about including a principle like usability or something that is that will assess if the uh, assess a part of the requirement stuff. That question's in the chat too. Mm -hmm. Okay, a uh, principle about uh, usability on uh, that uh, ontology should be used in specific environments or w what are you trying to mean? Because I'm a bit unsure on uh, which way do you want to, to focus about? Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll just put a clarification in the chat. Okay, 